So who exactly is Jack Easterby? Last year, the proper response would have been Jack who? However, today, after the month-long Deshaun Watson trade saga, we've seen his name pop up almost everywhere. The Houston media is talking about it. Houston fans are upset about it. From team pastor to running a franchise, Jack Easterby, a poor man's Tony Robbins. Regarding whether or not he actually engaged in resume embellishment. The Jack Easterby situation feels almost culty. There's somebody it. in there, I think it's Jack Easterby, Easterlay. Easter Easter B. Easter B. Yep. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the problem. For lack of a better way to say it, conned his way into this position that he's in specifically right now. It's the strangest professional NFL ladder climbing I've ever seen. There's something going on in Houston. I think there's a lot of people in football that think, again, for lack of a better way to say it, think he's a fugazi. Yet many still have absolutely no clue who Jack Easterby really is. His rise to the top of the Texans front office is unparalleled and has really never been seen before. No one ever exactly knew where he came from and he seems to be one of the biggest secrets in the NFL. And currently right now, Easterby is the Texans executive VP of football operations, meaning he holds the position of running the day-to-day -day operations of the team itself. For many fans outside of the Houston area, the first mention of Jack Easterby probably came via social media from a former Texans player in Andre Johnson, a wide receiver who last played with the organization back in 2014 but also held an advisory role in 2019. Upon a since deleted cryptic tweet posted by Deshaun Watson and the trade rumors surrounding his name, the former receiver, who really doesn't post much on social media, chimed in with his own tweet reading, if I'm Deshaun Watson, I will stand my ground. The Texans organization is known for wasting players' careers. Since Jack Easterby has walked into the building, nothing good has happened for the organization and for some reason, someone can't see what's going on. Pathetic. Now at the time of this tweet, Easterby aside from his current role, was also the interim GM before the recent hiring of Nick Casario. He first came to Houston in April of 2019 as the Executive VP of Team Development and was later named Executive VP of Football Operations less than a year later in January of 2020. So why is there all this fuss about Jack Easterby and his position with the organization? Well, for starters, we need to take a look back at his credentials and his past experiences. So I did some research and found that there were two sources that actually brought a story to light late last year. The first was from Pro Football Focus, where NFL sports writer and commentator Mike Florio and former NFL QB Chris Sims addressed their issues surrounding Easterby's ascension through the Texans organization, and a damning article from Sports Illustrated back in December 2020 in which they gave a detailed look into his background. But before we begin, I do want to state that Cal McNair, who is the owner of the Houston Texans, can hire whoever he wants in his organization. It's his team, and he can simply do as he pleases. With that being said, let's take a look into Easterby's past and his remarkable rise to the top from when he was just a team chaplain two years prior to now a top NFL executive. When looking at his bio on the Texans website, it states that Jack's story first started out in Jacksonville in 2004 where he assisted in football operations and public relations. Now this is where the story gets interesting as Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk addressed this with his colleagues around the league who knew Easterby. From his characterization of his experience with the Jaguars in 2004, when his online bio with the Texans previously said he was the assistant to the director of football operations. And then at some point after I started asking questions about that to people in the league who know him, it changes, it gets cleaned up. So it seems like the Texans initially had Easterby's role in Jacksonville as an assistant to the director of football operations in his bio, but after some questions from Florio, the Texans seem to have mended his role there. And from 2005 to 2010, Easterby worked as a character coach for the University of South Carolina Athletics Department. In 2011 and 2012, his bio states that he was in a character development role with the Kansas City Chiefs, and this was another issue Mike Florio would address again on PFT. The impression has been created that Jack Easterby worked for the Chiefs for two years. He didn't work for the Chiefs. He never worked for the Chiefs. He was never paid by the Chiefs. He provided free services to the Chiefs. They paid for his travel to and from Kansas City on the weekends. But So I'm going to be honest here. There's not much info about Easterby and his time in Kansas City. He did, however, assist players and coaches after the Javon Belcher tragedy that took place at the Chiefs practice facility. Even looking at his wiki bio, it seemed like there was something, but when clicking on it, it looks like it got scrapped, which is pretty interesting. Sometimes individuals in his position would have proper wiki bios detailing their story and past positions around the league. 
Anyways, with that being said, from 2013, Easterby joined the New England Patriots in the capacity of a character coach slash team chaplain, where he would be in frequent contact with players through Bible studies. You would even see him on the field for practice drills and sometimes sat in on meetings. And like he did in Kansas City, he also had a hand in assisting players cope with the whole Aaron Hernandez situation. And in week 11 of the 2020 NFL season, when the Texans hosted the Patriots, Belichick was asked about Jack Easterby and had this to say. Yeah, Jack was, uh, you know, Jack was here for six years. Um, and, you know, he was really good for good for our football team, for the organization. Uh, he did uh, everything I asked him to do. Um, and he had a good, uh, good interaction relationship with everybody uh, in our building. Furthermore, Bill went on to add, Jack did a great job for us. His role was a varied one. He worked with a lot of different aspects of the organization, players, coaches, support people, so forth. He was a person who could connect well with everybody, from the owner of the team to the equipment guy that picks up towels and all the people in between. He was a valuable person in this organization in the time he was here. Basically, it seems as though his role was kind of like a life coach. He got to know players on a different level, established meaningful connections with them, and was a liaison between coaches and players, which isn't too surprising. This is New England we're talking about under Belichick's regime that has a history of being somewhat not fun for players, and it's always all work and no play. So players there probably enjoyed having a different character around them, and Easterby seems to have fit that role with his enthusiasm on the field. Anyways, when Belichick was later asked if he expected Easterby to be running a front office, Bill said, Jack's not a personnel person, no. So it seems as though Easterby's new role even caught the great Bill Belichick by surprise. That being said, there was a lot of positivity in relation to Jack's time there in Foxborough. According to an article on the Patriots website, there were glowing praise from former players. Basically, as alluded to earlier, it just seems as though he was able to really connect with players on a personal level and seemed to have formed a bond with them, which led to friendships in some cases. Jack would end up spending six seasons in New England and left in 2018, which brings us back to Houston. So with the Deshaun Watson situation currently in limbo, the Texans have publicly expressed that they do not want to sell their quarterback. However, Watson has pretty much made it clear that he wants no part of the organization moving forward, requesting a trade, and kind of has the leverage as he has a no trade clause in his contract, which allows him to dictate where he can go. This is clearly a sticky situation for the Texans. They've just extended their quarterback last year for $160 million, and now he simply wants out. And it looks like Easterby, ownership, and the organization are clearly at fault here. A big issue here was that they promised Deshaun that they would keep him in the loop for any head coaching or GM hires, and after hiring a consultant team for their search, they narrowed it down to two minority candidates. But Easterby and McNair simply ignored the firm's recommendations and kept Watson in the dark when they hired Nick Casario, so you can kind of understand where the QB is coming from. Also, they didn't do themselves any favors when they shockingly got rid of their former VP of Communications, Amy Palchich, who was well respected within the team and around the league. On top of that, the trading of star receiver DeAndre Hopkins for practically David Johnson didn't sit well with fans, players, and most importantly, Deshaun Watson. And while Bill O'Brien received the brunt of criticism in that deal, it's largely been reported that Easterby had a huge hand in this trade. Which now brings us to the article from Sports Illustrated that describes his leadership style as creating distrust and division in Houston. The article had conversations with over 40 individuals, current and former staff and players, and colleagues from his past, and what's being reported here is pretty damning. So on top of the D-Hops trade, Jack was undermining other executives, including Bill O'Brien, who was the one who brought him into Houston as they knew each other during their time in Foxborough. He also had the team holding workouts at the strength coach's house during the pandemic, even when the NFL told all teams to close their facilities. And lastly, apparently he had one Texan and two staffers being surveillance outside of their building. Honestly, this is some pretty crazy stuff pulled from this article. It's clear there's a bad environment in Houston, and to be frank, it kind of falls down on one person here, and that is owner Cal McNair. Many have stated that the owner is simply being blinded by Easterby, and in the end, Jack won the power struggle within the organization. And this just ultimately shows you his incredible rise to the top of the Texans hierarchy. One NFL executive who worked with Easterby in the past stated to SI, you're not going to be the team chaplain, then 10 years later, you're the interim GM. That just doesn't happen in our game. Only a couple months after getting hired by the Texans in 2019, Easterby attended a Super Bowl party from his previous employer at Robert Kraft's Boston Mansion. 
And here, we would see some of the alleged underhanded tactics Easter be employed in Houston, as he would be seen with Nick Casario, who was then New England's director of player personnel, and the two were seen chatting privately at the party. Meanwhile, back in Houston, in less than 24 hours, then-Texans GM Brian Gain got the axe. The Texans then requested a meeting with Casario, but before that happened, the Patriots filed tampering charges against the Texans because he was actually under contract. Charges were later dropped and Nick Casario ended up in Houston as a GM earlier this month. But before his hiring, the Texans did not fill in the void after Gaines' departure and this is where Bill O'Brien and Jack Easterby took on more responsibilities. So all those trades from mid-2019 to present, Jack had a hand in all of them along with Bill O'Brien. And just to harp back on Florio's rant about how Easterby had no experience with either the operations or personnel side of football, but here he was now with a growing role in the organization that began to expand to other areas such as injuries, nutrition, and contract negotiation. Anyways, Easterby's story is basically twofold. On one hand, he seemed to really connect with players while he was a team chaplain in KC and New England. He helped players and coaches from both teams to deal with the respective tragedies they faced in their organizations. But when he got to Houston and became involved on the personnel side of the team while boasting little to no experience, it seems like he created a toxic work environment and ultimately bringing down the culture in Houston. That being said, I'm going to throw a possible conspiracy theory out there. Could it be possible that Jack Easterby was a puppet in an attempt to get Deshaun Watson out of Houston and traded to... Could this possibly be all the doings of Bill Belichick? I'm just kidding. So I've been around Easterby for around 10 years, 10 years in a row. This dude is an amazing guy. He is well respected in the Christian community. So when you talk about football, that's different. For him being second in command, that's, that's interesting. 